there was a police waiting on the other side of that corner and we were so sideways that I was looking at him at the side of the road through the front glass. Everyone nowadays goes crazy for BMW E30 M3s and E36 M3s. But it's easy to forget that when those cars were new, they didn't sell very well. In fact, in Canada, where I'm from, they were lucky to sell 50 of them in a year. A lot of the cars would sit on the lot for, the, for over a year before they moved. The head of BMW M division came over from Germany and spoke to the American side of things, and they wanted to see if it would be possible to, uh, to bring the E36 M3 to North America, particularly in the United States. And after the, to a certain degree, fiasco of the E30 M3, the Americans were not too amenable to the idea of having a car. On the way back to Germany, he made a stop in Canada. And in Canada, he happened to find a, a knowing ear in a gentleman named Tom Plasinski. Tom was involved with BMW Canada, and he saw the value and the possibility of bringing the M3 to Canada. So whereas Canada got, or the United States got 1995 model year cars, in 1994, Canada actually got 45 E36 M3s, and they were done through a, like a skunk works project within BMW Canada, led by Tom. These cars were imported using a Norwegian spec exemption that could be done under low volumes. So the cars were primarily pre-sold. From my understanding, 43 cars were pre-sold and they just ordered another two to make an even 45. Through a lot of backroom channels and negotiating and fixing problems on the fly, they managed to bring the E36 M3 in a Euro spec with the European engine that had more power six throttle bodies, the proper unneutered European version managed to find its way to North America. And it's when the Americans found out through, from my understanding, in an article that was in Auto Week, they found out that the Canadians were doing this. They were like, well, now we want the M3. But the European one was too expensive, so they ended up finding a way of making a U.S. version, which turned out to be wildly successful for the United States, but that didn't happen until 1995. So in 1994, all of these cars, as I said, 43 of them were pre-ordered, and they started at a base price of, if I remember correctly, it was $59,900 Canadian. That gave you a car with no sunroof, no radio, fabric seats, and then the cars were all individually ordered and optioned. So you could add quite a bit to them. Things like leather seats, sunroof, CD player. There was a lot of options that what could be done to the cars, but some of them were ordered in a rather stripped fashion. And in fact, just last week, I had the opportunity to spend my time around one of these 45 cars. I was at a BMW car club event and the chief instructor of the driving school happens to have one as a personal vehicle of his. And he pointed out something that was incredibly cool. When they were doing these cars, they were doing a lot of stuff and they were almost sourcing some of the stuff locally. And the owner's manual of the car is leather. It's embossed, it has the M3 on the front. And on the back side, it has an embossing of the Canadian clothing company Roots which is known for its leather goods and, and other sporting apparel. So they obviously used the Canadian company, they outsourced it to make the, uh, the pouch, which is a really, really cool piece of Canadiana. So with the M3 now coming to North America and firmly established, it's now 1997 and I am a member of the Trillium chapter of the BMW Car Club of Canada. And we are invited, a group of us are invited to visit BMW of Canada on a Saturday and to test drive all of their new cars. What could possibly go wrong? You get a bunch of car enthusiasts being given keys to brand new BMWs and told to go out and have a good time. BMW of Canada had laid out a route for us that was on you know, residential, secondary streets, highway, so you could really get a chance to experience the car. Naturally, you let a whole bunch of enthusiasts drive the cars and it's not long before the neighbors start complaining about BMWs being driven at high speed in the area. I find myself in a brand new red 1997 M3 with my brother beside me 
and we're driving along and we have a friend of ours behind us and this is one of those dumb things you do when you're young. I wanted to show my friend how much faster I could go than him. And he was in a 540i, I was in this M3. We were in this very secluded road, straight piece of road. It was about, I don't know, half a mile, three quarters of a mile long. And at the end of the road, there was a tight, tight right-hander, 90 degrees, and it would lead into a growingly residential area. Prior to that, it was essentially an abandoned area. He's behind me and I decide to see how fast this thing will go and accelerate. So we get to over 200 kilometers an hour, 130 miles an hour, and, and I'm pulling away from him. And we have this 90 degree corner coming up. And so what I do, traction control off, brake at the last possible minute, down through the gears, and there's quite a bit of dust and dirt on the road. And I just snap the car sideways and I am just full Tokyo drift through this corner. As I said, it wasn't long before people called the police to talk about BMWs being driven at high speed in the area, and lo and behold, I was the next one to, to drive by. There was a police waiting on the other side of that corner, and we were so sideways that I was looking at him at the side of the road through the front glass. As I'm sliding past him, I already see his rear tire spinning. He's coming after us. Straighten the car out, and this is where I made a bad decision. I made the decision at that point, I'm not stopping, I'm going. My brother, the voice of reason, tells me, there's a police officer, stop. And my immediate thought is, no, I'm going. I accelerate down the road, I've only gone a couple of hundred yards. In front of me is this big water truck and he's negotiating a corner and I literally pass the water truck on the wrong side, I get in front of him, I go a few hundred more yards, I have a clear view to the entrance to the highway and then I smarten up. It's a dumb thing. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm gonna stop. I pull over at the side of the road, throw my four ways on, roll the window down, and I know it's coming. And I look in the mirror, and this police officer is shaking. His adrenaline was up. He was ready for the chase. And now all that energy's gotta go somewhere, and I'm that somewhere. And I just remember looking at my brother. He kinda had his head down, windows rolled down. I look to my left and this guy is huge. All I have in my face is a belt buckle. And the first words out of his mouth, never gonna forget them. He said, don't you ever try running from the police again. And he was absolutely right. He said, I already knew you were coming. I already had your license plate number because what had happened was people in the area had already reported all of the cars that had been driven at high speed leading up to me being the first one on the scene. He asks, of course, how did I get this car? Who does it belong to? And then he asks me for my driver's license and he tells me, I don't know what to charge you with. And he goes back to his car and while he's in this cruiser figuring out what to do, I'm looking in the mirror and two or three other cars stop of neighbors in the area to talk to him about BMWs being driven to high speed in the area. So I am taking it for everybody. And that's the way it goes sometimes. As my friend once told me, sometimes you gotta put your big boy pants on and accept it. So he comes back to me, writes me up on a lurid charge, dangerous driving. Luckily back then in the late 1990s, it wasn't the penalty that it is today. Now that would be a $10,000 fine, uh, seven day uh, impounding of the car and seven day loss of your driver's license. So he escorts me back to BMW of Canada. I pull up and with a cruiser and the police officer goes, talks with the guys at BMW of Canada, and to be honest, the guys at BMW of Canada couldn't have been cooler. They came back to us and they said, don't worry about it, they know the way to our place. But have a good time, but just you know, try to keep it down a little bit, moving forwards. So I got this massive ticket, and then I, I hired a, an agent to try to help me out with this one. And I really wish I would have known Mark Gold from the Ticket Clinic because he probably would have helped me out on this one. When I showed up at the courtroom, there were two different couples that had shown up, taken their day off of work to make sure that, act as witnesses, to make sure that, you know, those people who were driving BMWs on that day were going to get in all the trouble of the world. If I remember correctly, it was, it was knocked down to failure to remain in lane, but it was still a pretty hefty fine. And, and a decent loss of points that took quite a few years uh, to clean off of my record. 
One of the ironic twists of fate that happened afterwards, though, was that the following year, when they opened up the same event to invite the BMW Club of Canada, the executives of the BMW Club of Canada told me that it would probably be best if I don't come back because of uh, what I did last year. I didn't really care for that too much because the fact is everybody was doing it. I just sucked it up and took it and didn't, didn't drag anyone down with me. On the day of that event, I found myself in and around the area of BMW of Canada. And wouldn't you guess that when I was driving there, I got passed at incredibly high speed on the right side by the two executives of the BMW Car Club driving a, a Z3 well in excess enjoying their day at BMW of Canada. For a limited time, Glossit's best ever DIY ceramic coating deal is back. Last year, too many of you ordered it and it broke his sight for a little while. But now, just the first 2,000 of you can get Glossit's $150 bottle of graphene ceramic coating for just $69.99 and you get a free $50 bottle of their ceramic detail spray, which makes the application a breeze. So click right now at the link in the description below to get yours.